I believe life is an exquisite opportunity to explore all facets of who we are, who we get to be, who we are not, and who we choose to create ourselves to be. I believe life is happening for us. It's a wild and exciting adventure and around every corner, we get to dive in and explore how or why things are showing up for us the way they are. From the people, the places, the patterns, and even the situations. It's our own healing adventure. Imagine, who will you choose to be in the midst of all the highs and all the lows? You get to say how life goes. You first have to be aware of why and how it's showing up for you. Consider, life gives you the opportunity to mold, shape, and expand into your greatest self. Come with me on this journey where I explore various aspects of my own life and how I tackle my own healing adventures and what I learn from them. Maybe what I have to share could make a difference for you or someone else. Welcome to Life's Healing Adventures. I'm your host, Tara Michelle. Welcome back to another episode of Life's Healing Adventures. I'm Tara Michelle. I'm so excited to be with you all this week. Thank you again for joining me. Um, those of you, if it's your first time, welcome. Uh, I am a intuitive healer practitioner. I'm also um, somebody who works in the corporate space, a single mom, kind of do a lot of things. Um, but one of the things I love to do is sharing life through the lens or the eyes of, I like to call myself the uh, goddess warrior soul. Because <laughs> how I see life is as an adventure. Everything we explore and experience in this world is happening for us, not to us. And I truly believe that. And so um, today we're going to talk about, well, first I do want to say thank you again to Kindy Malat on our last episode. There was quite a few of you that tuned in. I'm glad some of you reached out to her it is so much fun just riffing with her and talking about random things in regards to fitness and health. And I think what we decided to do is we might have like a fitness Friday and start, you know, having a regular conversation just because there's so many good things to talk about. There's so much meaty information out there and we can really dive deep on some of these things, these topics. You know, I was on a call with her the other day about, um, it was her call that she does for those of us that work with her. And we were getting into food and food habits and just some really good nuggets. So anyhow, I want to say thank you to all of you who have been continuing to tune in. I hope that we can continue this journey together. But today I'm excited because today is a fun one. At least I think it's fun. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about find the evidence of love in every aspect of your life. And I'll share how this came up briefly. Um, the other day I had a dear friend of mine who actually I'm going to have on the podcast. We're going to do an episode of around self-discovery through dating and relationships, because he and I have been on this dating adventure together uh, not dating together because he's like my best friend, um, but we've both been dating separately people and we have grown so much and we've seen so much about who we are and we just want to get on and talk about it because there's a lot of juicy nuggets there too. Because again, life is happening for you, not to you. So, okay, let's talk about the evidence of love all around. So my dear friend, Robbie, he reached out to me the other day. He's been dating uh, somebody new and wanted to share with me, but he was also checking in with me because I had been on a recent date and some things like went like, weren't, weren't, didn't go that great. <laughs> weren't, weren't. First date, second date, no more dates, <laughs> but that happens, you know? And so he was, he was checking in with me and wanted to see how things were going. And, you know, ultimately I felt good about about how things went. Like it just wasn't a fit, you know? And he, he was asking me about some other things that I had been moving through with some other people. And, you know, there was somebody who, uh, how do I say it? It's so funny. Like, I'm like, oh, don't say it. Don't say it. But I want to say it. There is somebody that I, I really 
I really am interested. I really care about this person. And uh, we were talking a little bit about that. And one of the things he said to me, because I was, was I complaining? I wasn't complaining. I was exploring like, you know, there's these things that don't work for me. There's all these other things that do work for me, but these one, there's some things that don't work for me. And what he recognized in my speech was that my focus was totally on these things that weren't working. But what he knows about me and how I've communicated about this person is that there is far more that has always worked with this person and far more wonderful things that have been said, actions that have been taken. And he said, I want you to try on looking at all the good things that did occur and all the good things that do continue to happen with this person instead of those small things. They're not small things, but instead of that small handful of things that you feel are not happening. Now, this is not a new concept, y'all. And I'm sure many of you will be like, oh, well, of course, yeah. Focus on that which is working, not necessarily what's not working. So when he said that, like the light bulb went off, I was like, oh my gosh. And one of the things I took on doing is I started going back and recounting all of the communication between me and this person and recognizing, oh my gosh, there have been far more conversations that were filled with love or laughter or jokes, like, you know, like fun. There's fun, there's connection, far more of that than the lack thereof. Okay. <laughs> and when I really got present to it, I was like, oh my fuck, like shit, Tara, you've been focusing on like the few times, the handful of times that things didn't feel good or they didn't feel right. Or you made up some story about, okay. Now getting back to finding the evidence of love. While we were in that conversation, we were really fleshing out that, just that concept. Like in every aspect of our life, we tend to, more times than not, the human design is to focus on that which is not working. The human design also can be really uh, passionate about complaining, <laughs> about not being in joy, about all the negative, right? It's it's, it, it tends to be easier to fall prey to negative thought forms and negative thought, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Negative thought forms, like negative conversations. That's the word negative conversations in your mind versus staying with the positive. Okay. So we had this great conversation. We wrapped it up. Lots of love. Love you. Love you. Okay. Have a great day. Have a great week. And then we went about our days and we went about our business. But I told him that I was going to take that on. I was like, shit, I haven't done that in a really long time. Like I haven't really sat down and that said to myself, okay, let me, let me look for the love that is present in my world. Now, another thing I used to do, if you aren't familiar, there's a really cool book that one of my dear friends, uh, Sarah turned me on to. It's called 369. It's a manifestation book. It's really fun. If any of you guys out there listening have played with it, man, I'd love to hear your feedback because I've had miracles happen with that with that stuff. Because manifesting really does work. It does work, but you have to stay committed. Now, I was manifesting for several months and I was really focused. And then I got this new job that I have and I kind of slacked off and I was like, ooh, I slacked off. And so you know, I don't want to say anything went sideways, but I will say the momentum of certain things slowed down. So I thought to myself that night after getting off the phone with Robbie, I was like, Hey, you know, I'm going to go back to manifesting. And what I'm going to manifest is that I am loved. I'm lovable. And I'm surrounded by love. And, you know, like in the three, six, nine book, you write it down three times in the morning, six times in the afternoon, nine times at night. I can't say that I'm that rigorous at this point in time, but what I am doing is I'm writing it morning and night. And what I'm writing morning and night is I actually just sit down and I have a journal. It's actually sitting right next to me here. 
and I start writing about, um, I start off saying that I'm loved, I'm lovable, and I'm surrounded by love. And then I start, like, I just let my brain flow with imagination of what that means to me, what that looks like, how life feels, you know, what's happening in my life. It doesn't even mean that it's happening. I just like start creating these words and just brrr. now the other thing too. And when I say brrr, I mean like on paper, <laughs> the other thing too, is that my love language is words of affirmation. So I love to speak. I love to write. So words come, they like flow from me. Right. I think sometimes too much and some people are overwhelmed by it, but that's okay. I can't change who I am. <laughs> I can change who I am, but I'm not going to change that part of me. I love that. I love to speak and talk and have fun. And I love, I'll say this. I love to acknowledge people. So any of you out there listening, if you feel that you have not been acknowledged lately and you really want to be acknowledged for things that you do, send me a comment, shoot me a message, go to my website, shoot me an email. I uh, would love to hear from you. And I would be happy to acknowledge you. You know, I think we as humans just need to be acknowledged a little bit more every day. Like, really, what do you want to be loved for today? I'm happy to acknowledge you for that. So, okay, back to finding the evidence of love. So I took it on. I took it on this last week. And man, I forgot how good it can feel to like really acknowledge the love that is present in all aspects of your day, like all day. Okay. So there I was, I went to bed that night and before I went to bed, I sat down and I started writing in my manifestation journal here. It's not even really manifestation. It's just my journal. And I just started writing, just started writing things that I love. Like I'm loved, I'm lovable, and I'm surrounded by love. And this is what that looks like in my life. Went to bed feeling good right? Woke up the next morning, had a text message I was not expecting from somebody who I think is really special. Um, later that morning, got a phone call from somebody who is lovely and special. Like friends started reaching out saying wonderful things. Um, my son showed up in this like beautiful, just beautiful energy of love with me in the morning, you know, when he woke up. My point in sharing this is, is when you really start to look for the evidence of how life is showing you love, you see it. With the way that the world is right now, you wake up to evidence of not that. You wake up to evidence of arguing political battles, racial battles. <sighs> what am I going to say? There's, you wake up to so much dark. Okay. And I don't want to say you wake up to it because I don't know what you, how you have your home set up and how you wake up in the morning. But if you turn on the TV or you turn on the radio or you open up a magazine or Newsweek or whatever the hell it is, newspapers, your phone. It is not likely showing you evidence of love. If anything, we live right now in what's called an information war. Some might even call it um, World War IV, an information war. That's a, another tunnel you can go down, but we're not going to talk about that stuff on this channel. Not right now. I might get into all that stuff one day, but really I'd rather just keep it on like, you know, life is happening for you and let's self-evolve, <laughs> but because that, that stuff can get dark and heavy and it's really cool stuff to dive into, but it, it, it can be an ever winding, you know, tunnel. Um, but my point is you wake up to not love nine times out of 10, if you were to open up any media stream of anything. One of the things I do every morning, I do go outside. Um, I, I live on, I have a little bit of land here. I go outside. I go barefoot. Typically I let the dogs out to the second part of our property. And I stand with my feet, you know, grounded into the ground. And I do some deep breathing work and I, you know, do some prayer work and I 
pull the energy up and through. And I thank God for the love that is all around me. Sometimes in those moments, a bird will come and sit right next to me. A butterfly will fly by. That's love. Sometimes a beetle might cross right in front of me. That's love. When I wake up in the morning, I'll say things like, show me the truth of myself and show me the truth of others. When I go to bed at night, I tell God, thank you and I love you. And I tell myself, I love you, Tara. When we start stepping into those types of practices and we look around, we begin to see love newly, not just love the way we've been conditioned to see, seek, experience, love. I'm really talking about the fact that my lungs are moving at their proper whatever, like, you know, the, the, that they're functioning at their full capacity. That's love. Like breathing in and breathing out. That's love, right? And when you start seeing your world through that lens, that when your child walks up to you and just wants to give you a hug, that's love. And I speak from having a teenager. That's not always the thing that they want to do, <laughs> right? And then when people that you haven't talked to in a long time reach out to you and message you, and you're really fond of these people, whether they're friends, family members, that day, a man got on the elevator with me and just started talking to me and sharing with me about this awesome moment that he had in the parking lot that he never has in the parking lot. And that was that he found parking in less than 20 minutes. That's love. And he felt so overjoyed and elated to share that with me. And I just embraced it and like felt the love from him. When we start looking for the evidence of love, life is loving you all the time. Your day starts to fall into flow. Your experience in your energetic field begin to increase. Your stress levels come down. And during this last week, even my clients were amazing. I fell in love with my clients and who I got to be for them was their hero. I got to be the person who brought them information, who supported them with their needs. And I mean, this doesn't typically happen. What I do is I actually do a lot of luncheons and that's where I get to pitch the product that we sell. And I work with doctors and hospital systems, but mostly clinicians. And it's a pretty common practice to, to do lunches for clinicians. What's not common is for a provider to walk by you and say, I want you to really know that I truly appreciate you bringing myself and my team lunch. That comment does not happen often. <laughs> And when he said that, and then he also made sure he locked eyes with me because he wanted me to know, like, I really appreciate you for doing that. And I got it in that moment. I got it. And I was like, wow, that's love right there. Because it is nice that, that all of myself and every other rep that walks through these doors brings these people lunches, breakfast you know, snacks, we feed that industry very well. <laughs> and sometimes they get used to it to where it's like, oh, you brought me that. I've literally had somebody walk into a lunch that I had, looked at what we brought, turned her nose up and said, Ugh, no thanks. And I thought, wow, that was a free lunch, but it's cool because the rest of these people are loving what, like loving what it is. And so we can always find evidence of that, right? Well, you can always go out into the world and find evidence where it feels shitty. Like the world is pooping on you. It's not, it's not laying roses for you, right? But I want you to start to practice. If you're not already doing this, I want you to take it on this week. 
take on finding the evidence of love and see how it makes you feel. Now, sometimes when you take on a game like that, the very opposite that you're looking for happens like boom, something really not so great can happen. I hate putting that in the space, but it can happen sometimes. And all that is, I'm going to say this, what that is, is that is residual energies of what has been in your thought process and in your thinking. I want to get into quantum, like quantum science eventually here and talk about the quantum space. I'm just not a scientist in that way at all by any means. So I have to really get my information like nailed down and bring you the conversation to where it really makes sense. But I want you to really think about that we are meaning making machines and we're thinking making machines. Like we are constantly in thought, right? We're constantly thinking. <clears throat> and what we need to know and what we need to understand is that every thought you're thinking is a seed. It's a seed of possibility. It's a seed of hope. It's, a, it's, a, it's anything you think is being seeded into the collective consciousness. Okay. And so my media does a really good job of fear porn. When you do enough fear porn, you get everybody thinking in fear. What does it create? A world of fear. And I think a lot of you listening to this, because a lot of you that are listening to this show, you're in that reality. You're in that realm. You're in that thought process. You're in that space of like, yeah, I get that there's power in my words and there's power in my thought. And I need to be mindful of what I'm thinking and what I'm saying. So every thought you have is a seed. It's out there, right? Now it's just how much energy are you putting into that seed? So if you're looking for the evidence of love, if you want to experience the flow of life, if you want to experience a, a heightened, increased energetic experience in your body where you have energy through the out, out, throughout the day and you feel amazing and you feel good and you feel like, God, it's 10 o'clock and I'm not even tired because you're as one of my dear friends, I love that she says this and she's going to be coming on the show too. She says, oh, I'm feeling spiritually caffeinated today. And I was like, yes, I love that. Like, I love that saying. That's her saying, by the way, not mine. Spiritually caffeinated. I love that because that's how it feels. So when I'm out in the world finding the evidence of love, I feel that. You know, in my neighborhood too, we have a lot of deer. We have a lot of, um, a lot of wildlife. And, and it won't, you know, it, it, when I'm, when I'm recognizing the love is present all around me and I see little baby deer frolicking about or mama deer coming really close to me. Um, we have two, we have a family of screech owls living in uh, one of our trees in the backyard. And I got to see the baby, like the baby came out one time and just popped its head in. And then, and even the, the parent popped its head out. Like that is love. That is the universe and nature saying, we love you. We see you. And I will tell you when those owls looked at me, I felt seen. I was like, whoa, <laughs> cause you know, how owls can be like, they just, woo, they have that like look, right? The point of me sharing this this week is I I took it on fully and I invite you to do the same. I invite you to do the same in the world where in the in the world where negativity is at its all time high at every level coming at you from the school systems, the religious systems, the political systems, the financial systems, there is negativity being pumped out some way, some shape or form, some argument, some disagreement, some separation, some you need to be against this person versus that person and this, this uh, conversation versus that conversation. And you need to be doing this, that, that you know, like, just let me be in the space of love. And you can really disconnect from that frequency when you begin to look for that which is love. So I invite you to try it on. I invite you to play with that this week. And I would be so curious to learn what opens up for you. 
what shifts for you? Who shows up? How does your partner show up? How does your best friend or your, or your colleagues or your clients show up? When you begin to look for the evidence of love that's already in your life, it's present. It's present right now. And if you don't think it is, I promise you it is. If you don't think it is, it's because you focused so much on that which is not love, on the stress, on the mundane, on all the da 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 You can focus on that all day long. And that's just going to like create really unhealthy energy in your body, in your mind, and in your spirit. Focus on that, which is love. You don't even have to focus. Like I need to take that word out. You don't even have to focus. You just have to look for it. Just look for it. It's, it's there. When you're at Starbucks, look for it. Tell your higher self or the world around you, God, universe, whoever you talk to, Say this when you wake up in the morning. I just heard to say, say it 10 times. Say it 10 times. Show me the evidence of love. 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 Say it 10 times. Then get in the shower and go about your day. And you will start seeing evidence of love, whether it's two people holding hands in front of you. And in that moment say, Oh, thank you. That's evidence of love right there. Whether it's a mother nurturing her child, whether it's an elderly person that just wants to have a conversation with you at the store. Oh gosh. And let's talk about a store. There's this store in my town called therapy boutique any of you live in this area, you must go there and you must see Kelly. She's amazing. Anytime I walk into that store, that woman, I, so I had this vision. I, I, I had this vision recently where I was like, I really want to find a store that I love that really speaks to who I am. And I walk in and they just dress me and I walk out and I feel amazing. I found that store. It's called Therapy Boutique in Georgetown, Texas, go there, ask for Kelly. She's amazing. When I wear that woman's clothes in public out into the world, oh my God, I get the most compliments. Now it's a couple things probably because I love what I'm wearing and I feel good in it. And I feel like it's an expression of who I am. Therefore people are more likely you know, feeling my, the expression of me. And they're like, oh, I like that dress or I like that skirt or cute top. But really what they're feeling is I'm like, I love this top or I love this skirt or whatever. Like it's the expression, right? But that's love. When I walk into therapy boutique and I see Kelly and she like, is like, here, 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 try this on, try this on. And it's stuff that I would never try. That's evidence of love. It's that giving and that receiving, the giving and the receiving of the universe and you playing as a co-creator in your world, in your life. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. So I'm going to shut up here in a minute, but I get really excited because I took this on and I was blown away at how my week shifted up and shaped out and shifted up and shaped out. Is that a thing? How it shifted <laughs> and, how, and how it shaped. Yeah. It shaped up that week. I had a great week last week. It was a beautiful week. I talked to people I haven't talked to in years. I reached out to people. I had people reaching out to me. Um, I, I had beautiful text exchanges with friends and, um, you know, just lovely people, like just things that were, you know, wonderful to hear and to say, I was vulnerable. I was authentic. I was my truth. I started really speaking my truth, not only at work when it came to this product that I sell, but also just with my son, I had to have some really difficult conversations, you know, parent kids conversations, and just really came from a place of love, reached out to a dear friend for support. And he gave really great, just, he just gave me the space 
You know, he gave me good feedback, but he really just held space for me to just be like, <laughs> this is what I need to talk about because this is freaking me out. And oh my God. And he just held that container for me. And inside of that, where I felt that space, like that's the universe showing me evidence of love. I was then able to have these incredible conversations with my son this weekend that really made a difference for him and I and shifted our relationship again. That's what's available when we're in that flow. That's what's available when we are seeking and looking for the love in this world. And how do we give back? Because when you see the evidence of love, you just want to give back. You just, you just give back. You just do. You're like, God, that feels good. I'm going to give back. So that's what I'm going to leave all of you with today. I do want to, um, let's see, I'm going to, I want to, I want to pick a card. I want to pick a card. So again, I use the body regen cards, body regeneration method. That is a tool and a <clears throat> modality that I use to move blocks of energy, not only for myself, but for others. And if you're ever needing support in life, you can always reach out to me. You can reach me at my website, taramichelle.com. That's T-A-R-A-M-Y-C-H-E-L-L-E.com. And you can book a session with me there. And we can look at whatever blocks you want to move, shift, change. If you just need support and guidance around certain topics, um, you know, I like to say life is really just the topic for me. Like people will say, oh, you should have a niche and maybe I will figure that out. I tend to know way too much about relationships, maybe not way too much, <laughs> but <laughs> given that I've been in my fair share, oh, we have a card jumping out, my fair share. And, uh, oh, increased communication. Um, I really believe, I really believe that my journey here in life, this life right now is to not only really hone and master my own personal, personal self-worth, but it is to hone and master relationships. I've had to do a lot of forgiving. I've had to do a lot of growing. I've had to do, um, a lot of seeking self-seeking, um, and relationships, both with friendships I shouldn't say both, all with friendships, romantic relationships, familial relationships, um, mother, child relationships, colleague, work relationships, you name it. I've had to really get on the court and I, I get on the court and I'm going to invite all of you get on the court this week, get on the court. If you're on the court, you're dribbling the ball, you're passing it around kudos. If you are sitting on the freaking sidelines, get on the court this week, get on the court, look for the evidence of love, start dribbling the ball and see what happens. And I'm going to, I just pulled the increased communication card. So what I'm going to do with that, because when we increase our level of communication, when we increase, uh, are, are, well, let's, let's first open our awareness to seeing the evidence of love. And then let's increase our ability to communicate and speak and sharing of that love, whether it's recognizing a beautiful flower and sharing it with somebody, whether it's seeing somebody and they are wearing something that you like, and you want to compliment them or someone compliments you increase the communication and allow that to reverberate out around you. And we're going to remove all blocks, resistance, hesitation, and interference energies. I'm going to collapse all of that now and removing that all out of your space, sending it all back to God, because you don't need any interference, resistance, hesitation, or what was the other one? Interference, resistance, hesitation, blockages, removing that all out of the space. Resistance, hesitation, interference, energy. There's, I feel like there's something I'm, what's coming through that I feel like I'm missing. This is where my intuitive, my, like I start hearing my guides talking. So resistance, interference from you 
and to all, all of the interconnected possibilities is what they want me to show you. So it's increasing your levels of communication from you to those that you're connected with. And they're showing me spiritually, romantically. Spiritually, romantically. Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting some visualizations. Spiritually, romantically. They're also talking in the workplace, familial relationships. And that's why they're bringing it back to spiritual. It's just the spiritual relationships, all of your interconnected possibilities with all people in your life period, removing all of the blocks, resistance, hesitation, and interference energies. We're removing those out, collapsing them out of the way so that you can feel the experience of having your full self-expression spoken through your words of communication. And we're going to increase that communication because I just saw and heard some of you are not speaking up at work. Some, are you, some of you are not speaking up in the area of romance and relationships. Some of you are not speaking up with your kids. So I want to increase that communication and expanding that energy of love as you continue to step into your world this week and seek and look for the evidence. You don't even have to seek. You just be with the world and just look for the evidence. You'll see it. It's right under your nose all the time, all the time. And I want to leave you with that. And I want to thank you so much for always being with, I shouldn't say always, those of you that are always with me, thank you. Those of you that are new, thank you. And those of you that are, you know, coming and going, cause you're like, this topic works for me. That topic works for me. Thank you. Just thank you for being here with us. Um, I would love to hear from you too. If there's other things you really want me to dive deeper on, please let me know. But um, I plan to do some work around this podcast. I really just threw it out there at the time and just said, just get your butt on the court, Tara. And so that's what I did. I am actually working with somebody where we're going to start working a little bit more to um, tweak and hone a few things. Uh, one of the things is, you know, it is life's healing adventures. It is about life happening for you, but it's also me sharing through the eyes of a goddess warrior soul, because that's who I am. And just sharing my experiences and bringing people on uh, where we can have interesting conversations about topics that I think are really important to those of us who are on the path of self-discovery. That's really what this is about. I'm on the path of self-discovery. I love it. It's what I came here to do. It's a lot of fun. Doesn't always mean there's roses every day. <laughs> <laughs> and it can be a lot sometimes, but it's, it makes life juicy, fun, miraculous, and amazing. So thank you so much for those of you who hung out with me today. I look forward to our next uh, episode, which will be in a couple weeks, every other Sunday. Uh, if you want to talk with me more, check out the links below in the, in the notes of the show notes and have a blessed week again keep looking for the evidence of love. Life is a healing adventure. It is all happening for you. And I wish you all an amazing and blessed week. Thanks so much. Thank you for coming on this healing adventure today. If you're starting to see how everything is falling into place for you, consider rating the show and sharing it with one of your friends. Keep that spirit alive and join me next week. Same place, same time. Have a great week.